Hi, in this problem we're going to find the points at which the tangent plane to this surface is horizontal. Let's think about this very carefully. So first we have to understand what it means for a tangent plane to be horizontal. So if it's horizontal, it basically means it's flat, it's horizontal. So pretend that the tangent plane is laying here. That would mean that the normal vector has to go straight up. Right, it has to go straight up from the tangent plane. So its coordinates should look something like 0, comma 0, comma c, where c is not equal to 0. If that doesn't entirely make sense, maybe it's a little bit helpful to think about the three dimensional coordinate system. So here's z, here's x, and here's y. And so the xy plane is down here, right? Is the xy plane down here it's flat and then z is going straight up so c uh, you could think of this vector uh, as kind of like k hat except the magnitude might change right k hat is this vector here where c is basically some type of scalar multiple of k hat so it's just going straight up or down uh, from the xy plane that's the same idea here okay so now that we know what it means for the tangent plane to be horizontal we need to find uh, you know, the points. So we know that uh, there is a vector that is orthogonal to uh, our tangent plane. And that vector is given by the gradient of this, right? If you think of this piece here as big F, then the gradient of F is going to be orthogonal. So let's write that out very carefully. So the gradient of big F is going to be Fx at x, y, z, first partial with respect to x, f, y, which is the partial with respect to y, at x, y, z, and lastly, the partial with respect to z, at x, y, z. These are partial derivatives, and this vector is also orthogonal. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to set these two vectors equal and see if we can come up with something. It's kind of a cool problem because it forces you to think a little bit differently about what's going on. So fx is the partial with respect to x. So when we compute this, we treat all of the other variables as constants. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. That's just a, chain, a power rule. Derivative of y squared is 0. This is 0. Here we get negative 2. Right, everything is going to be 0 except the stuff with x's because everything else is constant. So all of this is 0, and a 3 is 0 as well. Again, when you compute the partial with respect to x, you treat all other variables as constants and you just differentiate the ones that have x's in them. Same thing with y. We're going to treat all of the variables that have that don't have y's as constants. So it's going to be 0, this will be 2y. Uh, 0, 0, plus 2, and the derivative of 3 is 0. And the partial with respect to z, again, x squared is going to become 0, y squared will become 0. This will become negative 2z and 0, 0, 0. Okay, so this is also orthogonal to our plane, and this vector which we created with our minds uh, is also orthogonal to our plane. So let's go ahead and set them equal. So if we do that, that means that we have, well, let me go ahead and write it out. 2x minus 2, 2y plus 2, and negative 2z. That's equal to 0, 0, c. In particular, what matters here is not the z, because we don't know what c is, but 2x minus 2 is equal to 0. That's very helpful. And 2y plus 2 is equal to 0. That's also helpful. Negative 2z equals c could be helpful, but we're not going to need it. So from here, we see that uh, 2x is equal to 2. So x is equal to 1. Super easy. 2y is equal to negative 2. So y is equal to negative 1. So now we just need uh, the z, the z coordinate. So I go back up and look at the equation. x squared plus y squared minus z squared. x squared plus y squared minus z squared. And let's see what the rest of it was here. Uh, minus 2x plus 2y plus 3. So minus 2x plus 2y plus 3. You would think I have this written down, but I actually don't. <laughs> so I just got it from somewhere and wrote it here on the screen, and I said, let's just do it and see what happens. 
Um, okay, so now we're gonna plug in we're gonna plug in these numbers. So x is one, so it's gonna be one squared, so one. Y is negative one, so again it's we're gonna square it, so it'll be one. Z we don't know. Minus two times one, so that's just minus two. Uh, y is negative one, so when we put it here, this is gonna become a negative two, and then plus three, and that's equal to zero. So here we have two minus z squared minus four plus three. Okay, so far so good. This is two, oh, and equal to zero. Two minus z squared minus one equals zero. That gives us uh, one minus z squared equals zero. So z squared is one. Taking the square root gives us a plus or minus. So we get z equals plus or minus one. So we have two possible uh, points. We have two points rather where uh, the tangent plane is horizontal. They're not possible points, they are the points. Uh, so we have one, negative one, one. That's one of the points where the tangent plane is uh, horizontal. The other one would be one, negative one, negative one. Right? Just one for each case of the z. And we keep our x's and our y's. So the main idea here is the beginning, right? The rest of this is pretty easy. Uh, it's the beginning part. It's this part here. Uh, you have to think about what it means for a tangent plane to be horizontal. So if it's horizontal, it basically means it's horizontal. So think about the xy plane and z just shooting straight up. Your tangent plane should look like that. And so your vector just goes straight up or down. So it's kind of like k hat, but it's really like a scalar multiple of k hat. So you don't, really don't know what it is. And so you, that's the form of your normal vector for your tangent plane. At the same time, the gradient also gives you a normal vector for your tangent plane. So you set them equal and then try to figure out what x and y are. And then to find z, you just take your numbers and you plug them back into your original equation for your surface. And then that's how you get the z coordinate for the points where your tangent plane is horizontal. I hope this video has been helpful. Hopefully even just a little bit made sense. I always think even if a little bit makes sense, it's worth it. Good luck.